If you're like me and you like 3D printing, then you've probably seen one of these conversion kits. They basically convert your 3D printer to direct drop, which means the film is loaded directly into the hot end instead of going through a whole Bowden tube, which is pretty common on Ender 3 3D printer clones like mine. Anyway, so I tried to design one myself. So this is... So the first thing I did was make the design for it. Yeah, for some reason I didn't record any of the footage of me designing it, so I'm gonna take you through the process of how I did it. I know there are ones like probably online, like the ones on Things First and Things, but I'm stupid so I decided to create my own design. I knew I wanted to base my hot end off of the Hero Me designs by Media Man 3D. They got like little mounting holes where you can mount different fan ducts on there. I also wanted to make it super modular, so you'll see later how I ended up customizing it. But the process was pretty simple. I was able to import STLs into Blender. I found design files from my 3D printer's hot end parts on things. Stuff like the extruder gears and like the stepper motor. Anyway, the final design ended up being all in one piece, mounted by the wheel screws. I also put a 4010 fan on the front for cooling off the hot end. Once that was done, I just started printing it. I would be lying if I said there weren't many failed prints, but anyway, uh, here's the one that I actually printed. I just had to remove the ports and clean it up a little bit. So yeah, the print printed it out pretty well. Anyway, once that was finished printing, I had to make sure I got my cable for my stepper motor. Because I need to move the extruder motor to make it direct drive, I needed a longer extruder motor cable that will actually reach from my motherboard to my extruder. I didn't have one that was long enough, so I tried to solder like multiple cables into one of them. Uh, it ended up not working. I don't know why, I made my soldering shields not good. So I just ended up ordering one online. Anyway, this one is actually legit, so it should work. Also, I decided to swap out my thermistor wire, which is a wire that checks the temperature for the 3D printer. And as you can see, the old one was like burned or something. Anyway, just gotta plug everything into the motherboard. And if you haven't seen that video, I actually upgraded my motherboard from the original stock motherboard. For the upgrade, I had to remove my old hot end setup, which was just a mess, basically. So I still don't know if this upgrade is actually getting my print quality better. Here, I basically gotta remove everything off the hot end. Oh yeah, this is my old fan duct. Then, I just pulled out all the old filament from the old extruder. And I'm gonna be swapping out the PTFE tube too. I also removed the PTFE tube on the inside of the hot end because I wanted to replace it. Super crusty. Now I just install a new Capricorn PTFE tube. And I made sure not to have any loose screws. Then I just unscrewed the wheels. Now we can finally put on the new printed part. Oh yeah, I had to use a carving knife to make these screw holes a little bit bigger. Then just screwed it on with the wheels. And boom, we got the plastic piece installed. Next, I need to move the extruder. Hopefully it actually fits onto the hot end. As you can see, it's my old stepper motor. I had to unscrew this tiny grub screw to remove this. I'm going to be moving the stepper motor from my dual Z-axis kit onto my hot end. It's a little bit lighter, so it should be better for putting on my hot end. After that initial cut, I measured where I was going to actually cut it with a sharpie. Now the PTFE tube should be locked in. I also have to lock in my extruder gear. I made sure to use a piece of filament to figure out where it was supposed to be. Then I just screwed in these four screws. After that, the aluminum dual gear extruder was actually installed. Then I just threw on a couple of things like the BL touch, which is actually used to automatically level the bed. It's pretty cool. And like a 4010 fan to keep the hot end cool. But now it needs to test if it actually worked or if it even made the printer any better. So after plugging in all the cables into the motherboard, I homed the printer. But then I tested to see if these extruder gears actually turned. But the extruder gears weren't turning the right way. I just had to remove an exclamation point in my config. Is it extruding right now? It's not extruding. It's extruding right now. Is there anything open? Before I get printing anything, I need to calibrate the rotational distance. This basically tells the extruder how much to extrude for each command. So I marked 120 millimeters of filament. Then I had to extrude 100 millimeters. 
After that, I just messed with how much was left on my calipers. Since it's 17, it's slightly over extruding. So I basically put it into this rotational distance calculator, link in the description, and it basically just calculates it for you. You just gotta plug in your previous rotation distance, actual extrude distance, and requested extrude distance. Also, these numbers are fake. Anyway, just copy that number in my config and we're done. After that, I need to adjust the Z offset, which is basically how far the printer needs to be from the bed. I used a piece of paper to make sure there was just enough space between the nozzle and the bed. After that, I just accepted it and then done. And I just printed out a bed level test to see if it was actually at the right height. Basically goes across the whole bed, printing a whole line. As you can see in this back corner, the nozzle is way too far away from the bed. So it just ended up messing up. So I messed around with the Z offset a little bit more. I set up some things like in clipper, like access twist compensation and bed screws adjust, which should help it print better. Oh yeah, if you guys want to learn how to calibrate your 3D printer, then you should probably follow this website by Teaching Tech. It goes through every step basically and all that's what I use. Anyway, let's print out a calibration key. So yeah, it finished printing, but it doesn't really look right. I had to change some settings in Kira and then reprint it. Then I just measured the walls to see if it was 0.6. Anyway, with the flow rate calibrated, it's time to print out the fan duct. So yeah, it looks pretty good. Hopefully it works. It's supposed to fit a blower fan. Anyway, I just need to install it onto the printer. So this fan duct kind of didn't work. It ended up with a lot of failed prints. Or just bad looking prints in general. So I decided to swap out some things. Good thing it's fully modular. First, I changed out the nozzle. I think my old nozzle was part of the reason why I wasn't printing properly. I'm gonna change it from a 0.6 to a 0.5 nozzle. It's also a new one, so it shouldn't have any clogs or anything. This process is pretty simple. You just need to heat up your nozzle to like 230 and then make sure you unscrew it and the heater block doesn't move. Then while it's still hot, screw on your new nozzle. And boom, we got it installed. Then you just gotta put on the silicone sock. Now to swap out the Fanta. I decided to go for a different design. I noticed with the other one it was way too close to the bed and it was kind of like scraping the prints off. So I just modified one of the designs that were already there to fit onto my hot end. I had to make this fan angled so it didn't hit my extruder. Anyway, after that I was getting some pretty quality prints. So then I went on things to look for something to print. Okay, let's do Clash Royale. Alright, got a pretty good selection here. Wait, what is that? Bruh. Showtime! Magic! So yeah, I had to slice it up and put it on the printer. 40 minutes later, it came back and it looked pretty cool. So yeah, I just have to remove the supports. Okay, it kind of looks like wizard, but not really. Uh, I don't know if the print quality got any better. I can definitely still see some unevenness with the layers. I'll probably try to tweak the settings to actually make it better. But anyway, that was my upgrade. So hopefully you guys liked it. And would I recommend doing this on your printer? Probably not. It didn't really improve the print quality that much to be that much of a change. But anyway, we went from this to this. So subscribe. And consider watching another video if you enjoyed.